hey, hey, it's your friendly neighborhood hashtag bassoonists talk host, Dr. Laura Bennett Cameron. So Dr. Bellamy and I have been going through a lot of different talks about etudes, how to prepare them, and all that good stuff. We talked a lot about the pre-practice routine or how you evaluate an etude and prepare to play it before you actually begin the sight reading process. And that's something I'm going to walk through with you right now on Wiesenborn number 30. It doesn't take a ton of time, but it really pays off big, big, big dividends in really improved sight reading, informed sight reading, and a better final product. So let's jump in. The first thing I wanna look at is the key, three flat, starting pitch of C, ending pitch of C. That tells me we're in C minor, and I confirm this by scanning for B naturals and A naturals. So that tells me I probably want to play a scale before I begin. I'd pick a C minor scale, probably something with those naturals in it, so a harmonic or a melodic. The next thing we're going to scan for is range. So the highest note in this etude is A flat 4, and the lowest note is E sharp 2. So make sure you can play both of those notes and every single one in between, and you should be in good shape. Now let's talk about the time signature. So the time signature is a C, which means common time, which means four, four, which means quarter note gets the beat, four beats in the measure. So no big surprises there. I feel pretty good about my ability to read in four, four. The next thing we wanna look at are the various types of rhythms and subdivisions that we find within our meter of four, four. So we've got a pretty repetitive section here. Um, you know, lots of eighth notes, just a handful of quarter notes and a handful of quarter rests as well. So nothing, honestly, that I would worry about before I start citing, sight reading this particular etude, but you want to make sure that you understand all of the rhythms on the page before you begin. This one I feel pretty good about, so we can move on. Next, we want to talk about the various uh, terms we see on the page and make sure that we can define them all. So allegro means fast, assai means very, poco means a little, F stands for forte, which means strong. Diminuendo means to get gradually quieter. Retard means to get gradually slower. Here we have a tempo, which means to return to the tempo that we were playing before the retard. And then we've got poco forte, which we already talked about. Okay, now if I didn't know what any of these terms were, I would just hop right over to Google and look them up. There's some really great music dictionaries online. Okie doke. So now that we've defined these terms, what I want to talk about is allegro assai, our tempo marking. So allegro means fast and assai means very. So this is going to be faster than allegro. Do I want to sight read it that way? I absolutely do not. So this kind of takes us back to our rhythm subdivision chat. And we want to make sure that we're looking at, you know, the, the different types of rhythms on the page. And we want to set ourselves up for a sight reading tempo, something that's slow enough for us to process everything at once. It's always best to learn everything on the page at, as early as you can and not to add things in later. So I would be choosing for myself an initial sight reading tempo of quarter equals 50 or quarter equals 60 to make sure that I can incorporate every single thing that's on the page. Hey, speaking of things that are on the page, let's take a look at the roadmap. So here I see a double bar. The double bar means that we're transitioning out of one section and into another. Now, technically not part of the roadmap here, but I do see this retard followed by a fermata, which tells me that we're transitioning from one section into another again. Here at the end, I see a double bar, which means we are finished. So I don't see any da capos, I don't see any repeats, but if I did, I would probably go through and kind of put these brackets things in there to make sure that I knew where to go back to. I'm really bad about missing repeats and I like to mark things in my music the first time so I don't make mistakes. Cool. Let's talk about dynamics. Here we have poco forte. We've got this little diminuendo we talked about down here and then the return of poco forte. So we don't need to worry too much about playing too loudly or too soft. But the one thing we do want to make sure we worry about are these little hairpins that appear in a lot of the bars, just to make sure that we give a little bit of shape, a little bit of life and finesse to that repeated slurred figure accidentals we have on the page. So just scanning through, we see F sharps, we see B naturals, we see A naturals, we see some F naturals, you know, reminder A flats, E naturals, we've got a D flat here, a high F sharp here, a high F natural immediately following. But the guy I really want to talk about is this fellow down here, this E sharp, and also the natural that appears in front of it. So this natural means that it's going to cancel out the E flat that's in the key signature, and then the sharp that follows it means it's going to raise it another half step. So we're going from E flat to E natural, then E natural to E sharp. 
E sharp on the bassoon is fingered like low F, so we just want to make sure we're ready for that. But I'm seeing lots of lots of accidentals in this measure, and that tells me I probably want to read through this measure really slowly before I begin to make sure that when I read it in context, I read it successfully. Cool, cool, cool. Let's move on to something a little more simple. So in this particular etude, we want to look at the clefs. Scanning that left margin, I see only bass clefs scanning left to right. I don't see any treble clefs. I don't see any tenor clefs. So we are squarely in bass clef for the entire etude. All right, we're getting near the end. We want to look at the types of articulations and releases we have in here, or the expressive markings. So we see this, which is marcato. If you don't know what that means, I would look it up, but I will tell you it means marked. We usually translate that to mean um, separated, so a little on the short side, and also strong. So we're going to compare that immediately to these staccatos that we see here. So these staccatos at the end of the bar are going to be a little bit lighter, but probably just as separated to make sure that we can make those marcatos that fall on the downbeat really strong. Otherwise, we've got some slurs, no big, no big issues here. The articulation markings here look pretty straight forward. The last thing we're going to take a look at are the embellishments, and I will just go ahead and tell you there aren't any, but if there were, there's a special way to treat them. You can figure out what that is by listening to my bass rhythm video coming up during this Bassoonist's Talk Etude series. I think you'll enjoy it. So that was it. That was Wise and Born 30. We talked all the way through it. I feel good about it. I'm ready to sight read, and I hope you feel that way too.